well this thing there we go this thing used to have a little wheel that goes around it tells you when it starts live it's never sometimes it delays and doesn't go anyway listen today we're starting the new series on first john and let me begin by sharing a story with you first there was this old guy kind of sad and uh, he claimed to be a christian but he had not been in fellowship with the church or with any other believers for a long time. So one uh, pastor uh, who was real concerned decided to go pay him a visit. So he went to his house and knocked on his door and the guy opened the door and then went and sat down. And it just so happens that this old guy had a fire going. And... Uh, the pastor sat down in the chair next to uh, this guy and didn't say a word. Just sat there for a while. Then he took a pair of tongs and he reached in and grabbed one of the coals that was in the fire and set it on the little porch light in front of the fireplace and just sat there looking at that piece of coal. Well, as time went by, and they, didn't, they weren't talking to each other, that little piece of coal, eventually, the fire in it went out. The pastor then got up and walked out. All the message that this pastor needed to say was done in that illustration. Okay, when you remove yourself from fellowship with other believers, from God, your ember, your fire, your light begins to go out. I remember years ago when I worked at Boysville and in the evening we used to always sing a song. It only takes a spark to get a fire going. And that's true. And this is what 1 John is all about. John had written the Gospels. He, read, he, he wrote uh, uh, the Gospel of John. He wrote first and second and third John and he wrote Revelation now this we believe he wrote around 90 AD okay he's writing because he has rich fellowship with the Lord and he wants that for you and I and he's gonna tell us how to do that okay so first John as if, if, what I'm going to do here is just kind of give you an introduction, give you the big picture, and then we'll dwell in it in the coming days to come. Okay? John describes God in three ways. He describes him as light, which is used six times in 1 John, love, 33 times, and life, 15 times. The purpose that John is writing, 1 John, is because he has rich fellowship with God who is in fact light, love, and life. This gives him tremendous joy. He wants us to have that joy as well. You know, I, I'll be honest with you. There are many a night, and even sometimes during the day, that I have a very troubled heart. And it's during those times that I've learned to do something that has really comforted me and given me joy and relaxed me. And that's this. I picture God like that, but, but more specifically at his throne of grace. Okay? Now, I'm not the shepherd voice. I didn't grow up as a shepherd, so I can't write as the psalmist did, David, who said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, and so on. But what I have done in my mind is I take with me to the throne of grace two things, a sleeping bag and a pillow. <laughs> and I put it next to that throne of grace. I get in there. I get my head on the pillow and I feel really secure. I can go right to sleep. I don't know how many times I've done that. And if it's not that, sometimes I picture the hands of God so big and his wings 
covering me. Okay? That's the kind of fellowship that we're talking about here. It's transcend the natural. And you're going to find that in 1 John 5.13, one of the most important verses anybody can learn, is John says, I've written these things that you may know, not doubt, not wonder, but that you have eternal life. God doesn't want us to question it. He doesn't want us to be concerned about it, to doubt it. He wants us to know. It's interesting, but John, as, a, as the apostle and one of the writers, always in, in, in the book of the Gospel of John and, and all three of his epistles and even Revelation, tells us why he's writing those particular books. Okay, so what we have here is God, is light, love, and light. John wants us to have fellowship, not only with God, this is us, and this is others, and it kind of works like this. And he's going to tell us how to have fellowship by showing us the conditions of it for fellowship, the cautions of fellowship, which we're going to see, the characteristics, and the consequences. What was the consequence of that guy by the fire not having fellowship? His lobe, his love, his first love went cold. He just, he didn't have that life, that joy, that exciting exuberance about him that he could have had for who knows what reason. And a lot of people go through that. You may be going through that right now. You don't have any joy in your life. You know, you don't have the kind of fellowship you wish you had. Now, he goes through 1 John, and it's only five chapters. He's going to show us that a lot of people think they're in fellowship, but really are not. It's pretty eye-opening when, when I get to discussing the details of it. But what was going on in John's time was a thing called Gnosticism. Gnosticism believes that everything material is evil. So what they were saying of Jesus is that God could not have been the God-man. Jesus could not have been the God-man Christ. He could not have taken on humanity because that is evil. So what they were saying is that at, John, at, at baptism, when Jesus was baptized, is the Holy Spirit came in him, and then when he was crucified, it left them. But you know that in true, if you turn to Luke 24, 39, after Jesus had risen from the dead, he asked his disciples and apostles, hey, touch me, feel me. He ate and everything. So he's going to talk a little bit about Gnosticism, but for the most part, he's going to deal with how to have a rich fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ and with others so that your joy can be filled. Okay. And this is it, how to have fellowship with God, back to you, to others, and we're going to call that walking in the light. And light is the opposite of darkness. And he's going to show us how we know that we're in light by recognizing certain things. If those things aren't there, then chances are you're not really walking in the light. I know a lot of Christians that say they're in fellowship and they're doing it, but yet I see them doing other things, and i got to wonder if they're truly walking in light. And they tend to rationalize sin away. They, they tend to compartmentalize certain things so that they can live in a specific way without being accountable. But God, that doesn't work with God. God wants our life and our heart and our mind to be an open book. Completely exposed. No darkness in it. Nothing but light, life, and love. Okay? And we're going to show how that works as we go through this book. Let me just read to you the first couple of verses. The Word of Life. This is First John chapter 1, verse 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at, and our hands have touched. This we proclaim concerning the word of life. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. 
The life appeared, we have seen it and testify it, and we proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard, so that, and that's a purpose connective, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ, we write this to make our joy complete. Now, if you want that rich kind of fellowship and you want to have your joy complete, you need to stay with me as we go through this book, share this with other people, and you're not going to be like that old man sitting by the fire and your love's gone cold. But you want to steer it up again? Stay with me. There's no greater joy than to have a rich fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Even if you have to get a sleeping bag and crawl next to a throne of grace like I did. God bless you. You all have a great day and uh, we'll see you next time.